Day one. I can't believe it. I've arrived at Burning Man and I feel like I've landed on Mars. Strangers are offering me drinks and hugging me and saying, welcome home. But honestly, I'm kind of terrified and I wish that I could go back to my real home. I can't believe I let my sister talk me into this. What's your name? Gigi. Gigi? Gigi, yeah. Gigi? Yeah. Where are you from? Turkey. Oh, cool. Day two. I'm sad to say I'm still here. And at this point I've learned that everyone has a strange name like Helix or Princess Pickles or Gary Underpants, whose real name is not actually Gary, but Adam. Meanwhile, a person in my camp said that I needed to apply a nickname, and he gave me the name of Will Do. Will Do? Are you kidding? Of all possible names, how can I do anything when most days I can hardly get out of bed? Nearly every waking moment I feel lost, and all these excited people just make me feel worse. Look at this view. It's like you can watch the sunset twice. Totally, you definitely can. You have a lion on your head. That's so cool. Day three. So apparently every day is Halloween here, but I didn't get the memo to bring costumes. I felt so stupid at first, but nobody seems to care about my outfit. They just want to know me, and I don't understand why I'm so special to them. They even give me things like necklaces and green juice and bacon without me even asking. I'm also now hugging everybody when I meet them, which is really awkward considering I haven't even been hugged in nearly a year. But I kind of like it. And because I introduce myself as Will Do, I'm suddenly trying things that I never imagined myself doing, like climbing to the top of a giant metal boar. Never in a zillion years would I have expected to do something like this. Holy crap! Holy crap, you're lifting me! What do I do? Okay. Oh my god, you're so strong in your legs. Ah! I have to pee so bad. Oh god. Legs wide and heavy. Okay. Heavier, so face to the floor. Okay. Oh my god. Day five. I was too busy to journal yesterday, but boy, was it an adventure. The day was actually quite fun until last night when I got lost. We were biking to the Kundalini Lounge, and I thought that my friends were behind me, so I stopped to wait for them, but they were gone. And I was alone in a swarm of blinky lights and loud music. That's about the time when I had a full-blown panic attack. I mean, I knew that there was no way that I could find my friends in the chaos of the hundreds of people around me. So then after accepting this reality, I decided to try to bike home. And on my way, I met a girl who was also alone. I asked her if she was lost too, but she said that she wasn't and that she just preferred to be by herself. Then she invited me to join her, and then we intentionally got ourselves as lost as possible. And that night we discovered so much art that my face hurt from smiling. People have the most amazing imaginations. People can go in and make a metal feather. Yeah. Make it, th make it themselves like they were a blacksmith. Oh, so he's, whoa. Whoa. Day six. I forgot how much fun dancing is. It's like a universal language that you can speak to with anyone. Like, even if we were to meet an alien, we could play music and then both dance together, communicating back and forth while laughing with our legs. I found that when I focused on the dancing, then my pain went away. No pain, no cane. Day seven, Burning Man is a place to be seen, a place to be found, a place to get lost in the deeply sincere and silly moments and realize that perhaps when it comes down to it, love is the driving force that makes us all tick. I mean, I certainly had my anxious moments, a lot of them actually, 
but after spending seven days here, I'm beginning to understand what it means to flow. This place has showed me that my home isn't necessarily here, but anywhere I go. I realize that I am not attached to my home, or the stories of my past, or to the personality that I think I have, or the behaviors that I think people expect of me. I can wake up in the morning and be whoever I want, in front of total strangers, or even in front of my own friends. But I don't have to try to be anyone. I'm not an actor. I can just be me. Or, better yet, I can kind of just be them. I can be present with them, paying attention to them while listening and responding without needing to worry about saying the right thing. I mean, I can just trust my gut to say what I feel and be comfortable in my authentic thoughts, no matter how vulnerable or silly I may seem. I realize that if someone wants to judge me, then shame on them for not understanding that everyone's differences are what makes them truly awesome. We had this discussion last night. Think about how happy I would be with a way to model how much fun I've had. You should just carry a fun meter. Yeah. Like an applause meter. Could we design that? Could we, what if we right connected here. it to oh. your neurological system? When, it's, when the fun happens, it stands up straight. The higher it gets, the less fun I'm having, though. <laughs> Ezra! Can I finally give you a hug? Hey, fucking wall. What's up? What's up, buddy? Hey, I was gonna say hi last night, but you were fucking. You were, dude, you were having so much fun. I had so much fun last night. Day eight. I realize that it doesn't matter if you win or lose. What matters is that you play the game rather than watching it from the sidelines. People here aren't spectators, they're participants. In fact, the more weird and awkward you get, the more they like you. I realize that everything seems to work itself out in the end, so why bother to worry? Worry is so pointless. Things that I thought were bad have turned out to be some of the most important lessons in my life. I mean, yes, it's hard to push yourself to take action, but it's the actions that have helped me grow much more than if I had stayed home just thinking about the actions. It's funny looking back, thinking about how I felt lost for so many years, and all this time I thought that feeling lost was bad. But really it's just a feeling. Why did I keep thinking it was a bad feeling? It seems that no matter if we have our good days or our bad days, that life perhaps isn't necessarily happening to us, but for us. It's like we can choose to play the victim, or we can sit with the pain and play the human. To feel everything and be grateful that we can even feel it in the first place. I realize that the only way to escape pain and struggle is to go through it, face first. And if we deny ourselves pain, then we are denying ourselves the full experience of life. All there is is love. Love. Love is all you need. Day nine, last night I watched the temple burn and I cried harder than I ever have. I cried for all these years when I've been dismissing my feelings. And finally today, I feel free, free to express my truth and to know that my truth is safe. You know how people cry when they are happy and when they are sad? It seems that both kinds of tears lead to the same beautiful understanding that Life is so, so precious. And here we are, lucky enough to live it, and to know that no matter what happens, life is forgiving. And I don't ever want to forget that. Because had I never felt lost in the first place, then I would have never been able to find the new and improved me that I continue to discover today. Oh.
Black Black City Freedom.